everyone is still debating whether or not the Ezekiel Elliott signing was a good one, but let me tell you this. It just got better with the latest news, and we'll dive into the details. Here we go. What is up, everyone, and welcome into ADZ Sports Dallas Primetime. I stream live every Sunday and Thursday night, 8 p.m. Central. And in between, I catch up with you guys with these quick-hitting videos. Ezekiel Elliott signed Monday, right? And now we start learning more about the details of said deal. In the meantime, Cowboys Nation is still arguing all about this move. On the one hand, we've got people saying, it isn't worth it. It is a lazy move to improve the running back position. And on the other hand, we've got a party of people saying, Zeke still has gas left in the tank, so he's worth it. Here's where I fall, and especially with the latest news that we're about to hit on, here's where I fall. It's honestly a move that and nobody should feel very strongly about because you shouldn't be thinking that the Cowboys running back room got immensely better but you also shouldn't be looking at this like a negative move. Instead, it is adding some depth, adding some experience to a running back room that absolutely needed it, to a running back room that does not have a workhorse at running back one. And let, let me be clear, I don't mean that Sick is going to be that man. I mean this is going to have to be a running back by committee type team, and Ezekiel Elliott is going to help you with that. He's here to feel a role, whether that is short yardage situation, as many of us believe it will be, or entering in third and long situations to pass protect. We still don't know, but he's not going to be a number one running back for the Cowboys. And the deal says it all. We knew from the start that the Cowboys were going to sign Sick to a one-year deal worth $3 million with $2 million guaranteed. That's what we knew. We didn't know if the additional million to the one that is guaranteed was more of a kind of like, you know, we didn't know exactly what that was like. Uh, was it a roster bonus? Was it a workout bonus? Or blah, blah, blah. It turns out it's incentives for the most part. And it is Todd Arker's report on Wednesday with the breakdown of the contract where you are looking at a one-year deal, maximum of $3 million, signing bonus of $375,000, Got a base salary of $1.25 million, which is guaranteed, just like this signing bonus, of course. And then an active roster bonus of $375,000, which counts toward the cap. All of that gives you uh, a $2 million cap hit. The incentives, though, do not count towards the cap hit. So you're looking at a, a one-year deal worth $2 million in cap hit for Ezekiel Elliott. Why don't they count towards the cap, you might ask? They are unlikely to be earned. Now, this is not like a committee gets together and they ask, do you think Sig is going to go for 1,100 scrimmage yards? And, and then they debate yes or no. It's not how it works. How it works is just you look at the previous season. So you go through each of these incentives and you ask yourself, did Sig reach that number last year? And if he did, it's likely to be earned. If he did not, it's unlikely to be earned. All of these are unlikely to be earned. And let's look at the breakdown. If Seek gets 1,100 scrimmage yards, plus the Cowboys make the playoffs, which is a condition for each and every one of these incentives, he makes a quarter million dollars. If he scores 10 total touchdowns and the Cowboys make the playoffs, another quarter million dollars. If he gets a 51% snap count on offense, plus he goes to the playoffs, half a million dollars. That's how it's going to work for Seek and the Cowboys in 2024. Now, if you're asking yourself, well, could he reach these numbers? I mean, I think he could. Maybe 1,100 scrimmage yards. That's going to take pretty much him playing 51% of the, of the snaps, which... Is not crazy, but I also would would lean towards under in each of these numbers because I do think Rico Dowdle is going to be the lead back of the committee, bearing any injury. I think it's going to be very close. But ultimately, you look at the touchdowns, for example, I think he might hit those because if, especially if you're going to use him in short yardage situations, Seek did not reach 10 touchdowns in 2023 
but the Patriots offense absolutely sucked. In each of the first, in each of the last two years that he was in Dallas, Sick scored 12 touchdowns in each of the first in, in those two years. So Sick could very well reach 12 touchdowns, especially if he is 10 touchdowns, excuse me, especially if he is entering the field a lot in red zone situations. So I don't know about the scrimmage yards. Uh, he had over 900 in 2023, did not reach this number. But 2023 was weird for Sikh with the Patriots because he was in this committee type approach with Rahmandri Stevenson, who got hurt. And then suddenly you saw Sikh's numbers increase because he became running back one for New England when Stevenson went down. So if Dowdle stays healthy, I think Dowdle is going to be the lead back. I think it's going to be close to 50-50, though. So it's going to be interesting how it works. Rico Dowdle, and I don't mean to jinx anybody, but looking objectively at the player, does have health question marks. He's had hip injuries, ankle injuries. Like, there's something to be worried about with Rico, which is one of the reasons why I actually like the Ezekiel Elliott signing. But if Zeke hits the incentives, that is not a concern, right? Like, the Cowboys are paying this guy and... If, if he doesn't reach those numbers, well, they're not paying him an extra million dollars. And if he does reach those numbers, you're not worrying about it because he's getting it. Like he is producing that and you're happy to pay him in, in, in other words, right? Like a sales commission, you don't, you don't mind paying your salesman a commission because he's selling, right? So that's pretty much what makes the Cowboy signing slightly better. I would say uh, a lot better because man, it's a very minimum deal. And if his name was literally like, I don't know, like John Doe, we wouldn't be worrying about the signing at all. I think that people criticizing the, the, the contract are just or cannot escape the mindset that this is Ezekiel Elliott returning to the Cowboys. So it is perceived as a very lazy move. Now, on an additional note, Sick is going to be wearing a different number. Now, I think Cowboys fans and NFL fans in general, sports fans in general, tend to overthink jersey numbers. Now, I'm fine with that. It's part of being a sports fan. We care about the numbers on those jerseys because we're going to buy those jerseys or we're going to root for these guys when they're on the field. But I will say this. I absolutely love Seek switching to number 15. Parentheses, Trey Lance will be wearing number 19. But here's why I think it's perfectly fitting. As we've been discussing today and in previous shows, Seek is not joining the team as the same version of himself that he was from 2016 to 2022. So I think it's perfectly fitting for him to be wearing a different number. As I just laid out, he's not going to be running back one. Or if he is, it's not going to look the same as he did in previous years. He's not going to be the workforce, the workhorse of this offense. He's likely going to be backing up Rico Dowdle and entering the field in specific situations. He's going to be a role player. He's going to be the same man when he steps out there on that field, but it's going to be a new number. It's going to be a, a new version of the player. And I think Seek undertaking that number, we would have to ask him, right, to see if this is like just my theory or not. But in a funny little way, I do think it's kind of like an acknowledgement that he's on a different stage of his career. Sure, it's also because the rules have changed since he entered the NFL, and you might argue that's more likely it. But even if it's inadvertent, I think it's a perfectly fitting decision from Ezekiel Elliott to switch his jersey number. Plus, I'm not going to lie, 15 is going to look cool on him when he's rocking that star, when he's rocking the, the, the um, silver and navy. It's going to be fun to watch, man. Ezekiel Elliott back on the field. One thing is for sure, he absolutely loves it in Dallas. So let me know in the chat. Do you love or hate the Cowboys bringing in Ezekiel Elliott? Or do you just like it or dislike it? Let me know in the chat. Looking forward to seeing your comments. And I will see you Thursday night, 8 p.m. Central. We've got a live show and we've got a great guest. You're going to love him. We're going to break down the Cowboys draft class a little bit in detail with a, with a film analyst for ADZ Sports, James Foster. And I think we're all going to enjoy ourselves tomorrow night. Make sure you tune in. Make sure you set an alarm. Make sure you hit the, the like button. And yep, see you tomorrow, man.